Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to another episode of Health is Wealth. I am your host, Shabnam Riaz. Well, we're here today in this new venue. It's a lovely, cozy coffee shop, and we're going to be talking about soul food. Today's conversation is going to be absolutely amazing. I promise you that. We are going to be here with our special guest, Dr. Marat Mustansar, who is Pakistan's only peace psychologist. She has a PhD in that subject, and it is going to be amazing. The topics we're going to be talking about we are going to be talking about grief sadness and loss and also the soul the human soul what does it need in today's fast world well let's not waste time and meet up with dr marik and start the conversation going And now here we are sitting down with Dr. Maru. And uh, Maru, it's a pleasure to have you on the program once again. Thank you very much, Shabnam. And today's topic, the subject is amazing. Grief, sadness, and loss. I would say that there are so many people, you know, that when they listen to today's program, they will be able to relate. They'll be able to relate to something. The human soul, what it goes through, how it evolves, what happens, the feelings, the emotions that we do connect with, the emotions that we are actually confused about, and we don't really know what to do with them. There may be times when you're feeling sad, you're feeling, you know, lost, or all these things happening, but to grieve, you don't actually have to lose someone or somebody, do you? But what are the sort of mechanisms behind this? And how does a person know what they're feeling? Well, grief and sadness are both closely associated. First of all, we need to understand how will we define emotions. Mm. Emotions are more or less like the accelerator. They accelerate our feelings. Mm. So they're deeply connected. As for us, grief and sadness is concerned, it has a deeper meaning. Mm. It doesn't mean that you are suffering. I, I, uh, I will talk with a spiritual psychological perspective. I believe that sadness and grief are extremely important in our lives. Mm. Because every one of us, we are having this life, this is a journey to God. And sadness and griefs, grief make us realize what we are going through. What is our actual journey? What is the self-actualization? So it is extremely important in my opinion and depending upon why you are having grief or sadness, the stimulus is extremely important as well. The reason so feeling the, that way. Exactly, so oh. speaking of which, um, I will talk about faith-based psychology. In Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned that every one of us will have to go through the process of grief and loss, either it's loss of wealth, lives, uh, food, fruits, hunger, fear. In we fact, will be tested. tested. Exactly. So tests and tribulations are very important for us mm. to make our spiritual immunity. Ah, for example, I like that description, yeah, spiritual immunity. It wow. is very important. For example, I can give you an example of your cell phone. If you have a very good hard cover over your cell phone mm -hmm. and suddenly it falls on the floor mm. and it survives, right? Yeah. Because you have a harder covering over your cell phone. Okay. So in case of human beings, these trials and tribulation build our immune system. We have this ability to thrive in it if we are looking at the stimulus inwardly. So there are two ways of lo looking at the stimulus and the emotions, inwardly and outwardly. Okay. Typically in the modern world, when people are feeling sad or they're grieving, they, they try to blame every second thing. Mm. They try to blame themselves. They have these suicidal thoughts, mm -hmm. blaming others or sometimes blaming themselves. Mm. So this is how you look at the things outwardly. So when you are looking at the emotion inwardly, you try to figure out why this happened. What does it mean? What is my actual journey? What is the purpose of life? You know, I have seen people who have suffered with 
huge losses in their lives. Mm. Loss of life is immense. Mm. It's immense. So, in Quran, Allah Ta'ala also mentions, uh, talking again, speaking of the faith-based psychology, spiritual psychology as well. In Quran, it is mentioned that every soul shall taste death. It says, shall taste death. Mm. Not every soul will die. Mm. So when we are dying, it's a bodily death that is happening. Mm. Our soul, it goes from Hayatul Dunya to Hayatul Barzakh. Mm. And soul is eternal. But unfortunately, in the modern world, what happens? That we just forget about everything else. We forget about the eternal things. And we focus on the bodily unnecessarily needs. The unnecessary needs of our body, we focus on that at the expense of our eternal soul. Wow. So we are in this world for the soulful journey. So there is another spiritual myth that people talk about that, you know, spirituality comes to you when you are in the serene place, peaceful place, something like that. You know, many people have seen talking like that. But in my opinion, spirituality and the journey to divine is not easy. It's full of obstacles, yeah. which is why Allah, God gives us pain. So, but in, in fact, you know, in relation to what you're saying, Maruf, that so many people say that the, you know, um, pious people or people when Allah Ta'ala wants to bring you close to him, you will be put through pain and suffering and be tested. In fact, our prophets, yeah. that that is what they went through. And we're just mere human beings. Yeah. Yeah. So pain suffering loss you're saying is a sort of a developing a protective shell for the soul yes, it's spiritual, spiritual immunity, immunity. okay spiritual immunity. Mm. so i can give you first of all uh, uh before coming to the point i would first like to uh define the difference between pain and suffering yes very important thing so most of the people they do not understand what pain is what suffering is you know clients coming to me they do not have this distinction between pain and suffering mm. so pain is inevitable okay. it's always going to be in your life sooner or later you will be inflicted with pain either it's endogenous pain or the exogenous pain mm. you're going to have it but suffering is avoidable and how i can give you a very good example um, on that, for example, if you have a fire alarm in your home mm. and there's a small little fire in your kitchen, mm. so it starts beeping. The sound is, you know, really loud. What do mostly people will do? They will go, uh, they will just take the fire alarm, take out the batteries, mm. try to just shut it off, mm. right? So mostly people, they try to manage the pain instead of curing it. And if you don't cure your pain, you suffer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, by having this analogy of fire alarm, you can see, you know, the, hu the house is still, the on kitchen fire. is still on fire. It's in danger. Exactly. Same as the but you have to address the danger. Yeah. You have You're actually trying to just manage. made it worse. Exactly. So there's another example that I loved it. I was reading a um, couple of months ago in a book. So I loved that example, by the way. Mm. So there was a person who was extremely poor and he had this dental pain so he went to the dentist for his excruciating pain and the dentist tells him that uh, you need to have some antibiotics and the pain uh, for the pain management he gave himself painkillers like most of us will do he took the pain management medication like painkillers but he didn't go for antibiotics because he couldn't afford it after a couple of months he died because of the suffering because the pain was managed but it was not cured. Nice. So pain, in my opinion, mm. is a preventive measure. If something is wrong in your body, if you have fever, if you have cold, mm. you know, you have the symptoms of le being lethargic, laziness, you don't want to do something. Sometimes it happens like that, right? Mm. So these all uh, physical diseases, in fact, the emotional diseases, diseases tell us that there is something wrong inside of you. You need to cure there them. They are our own fire alarm. Yeah, they, yeah. they have this, the, and people they do not understand yeah. that instead of managing it, uh, instead of curing it, they start managing it, and they go for the societal sedatives, 
and these modern societal sedatives are so common, I, I would say that, you know, excessive use of social media, mm. hanging out with friends, partying, and sometimes in the West it's a, it's a lot more common, drinking and all drugs. that. Did, yeah, mm. drugs. They try to manage it instead of cure it because then there is a divine wound which keep on expanding. Mm. If you are not curing it, mm. you're just managing it, it's going to be expanded. That is so true. And in fact, with the drugs and the alcohol and the other things that you mentioned, what you're actually doing is just distracting yourself. Exactly. And you're numbing the pain exactly. for, a, for a short while. Yes, because you know, in psychology we say that unresolved emotions can lead to toxic anger and numbness. And in terms of the spiritual psychology, it is extremely important to understand that your kalb, your heart, is very important. You have to take care of your heart. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. it's your soul and your kalb. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a beautiful thought. Because, you know, we all are having this journey. We are having, this is a, this life is a life of tests and tribulations. This life, we are going to be tested. And this is a limited time period, all of us. All of our soul will taste death, yeah. and the bod body will die. Yeah. It will be the, it will be under the grave. Mm -hmm. So sooner we realize the facts instead of you know just forgetting about the reality, yeah. the truth about ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's important to cure it and return to divine because we are having this journey. Beautiful. Yeah, that, that's such a beautiful way of describing it. And everything you said there is so relatable. And that's what I was saying about the beauty of today's topic is so relatable. And that perception that you gave, pain and suffering, when you started with that, I was thinking, well, pain, suffering, aren't they sort of like synonymous? But you explained it so well that no pain is something that you can't control. You can manage, but until you get to the core of it, you don't need to needlessly suffer. That, that is so important. Okay, another very, very important emotion. Everyone, I mean, children as well, even, even babies, everyone feels these, this emotion, sadness. What does it mean when a person is sad? Do uh, specific personalities tend to be sadder than others? Is it something in our genetic makeup? Of course, external factors as well would influence uh, a person's emotion, sadness, whatever. Tell us about this emotion. It has inspired many poems. Uh, some, there's, you'll find so much shyly on this, sadness and movies and books and whatnot. Such a powerful emotion. Tell us about this, Malik. So sadness comes from the feeling of brokenness. When you, when you feel broken. Mm. So every one of us will at one point or the other will feel broken. Mm. So there's a very beautiful um, art in Japan. They repair the broken crockery, which is called kintsugi. That's a beautiful, I absolutely love that they repair it with gold. With gold, oh, yeah. And it's so beautiful. And the price of that crockery significantly oh. increases. Yeah. So Allah, God, mm. divine, he loves broken hearts. And this emotion of sadness is, I believe, extremely important in our lives. To know our actual journey. Mm. Because all of us have to face that spiritual journey, but modern man has forgotten that. Mm. We are extremely busy in the worldly matters. We have forgotten that why are we here? What is the purpose of our life? Why are we sad? Why are we having this pain? Instead of realizing the root cause of the pain mm. and the sadness, we start blaming others. You know, this happens because of this person. This happened because I didn't do that. This happened because this is that. Or if I'm the went, victim. To, yes, victim, victim syndrome, yeah. exactly. It has become significantly common and it's very rampant in our society. Mm. Not only in our society, but in the modern world. Mm. So in my opinion, sadness is extremely important to understand the core of your reality. Otherwise, you will never understand. You, you need to have that thought process that why are you sad? Why? Why, uh, why not you, by the way? So here I'm going to give you another, another example. There is a resilient expert. Her name is Lucy Hahn. She shared her story. And that was such a beautiful story that she shared about. When she became a resilient expert, she, 
Her daughter died, 12 years old daughter died in a car accident. Mm -hmm. It's a colossal damage, it's a colossal loss mm -hmm. to anybody. Mm -hmm. And the way she came up, she thrived up from that circumstance was amazing. She tells that story um, and she published that. Sadness was so powerful for her that she said, why not me? If everybody else is having the pain, is inflicted with pain, why not me? Because it's going to make me even more strong. It's important for my spiritual so immunity. So instead of the why me, exactly. it was the why, why not me. me. What you have to change the focus. Perception. You have to, this is what Mindset. Islam teaches. Yeah, yeah. This is what Islam teaches us. The spiritual psychology also talk, text, talk, talks about the same thing. Mm -hmm. That we, instead of questioning every little thing, we need to find answers within ourselves. Soul searching. Yeah. How much of that do we do? We're not bothered. Yeah. We're just, everything else is at surface level. Yeah. Everything that is happening, and, and we, before you know it, you're a part of that yeah, journey. Right. So what should a person do to be mindful of our emotions? And like you said about sadness, that this is actually something that is taking you somewhere. So I will talk about, uh, in this, uh, I will talk about from the Islamic peace psychological uh, perspective. Uh, mostly the Sufi psychologists, they have this firm belief that, and I, I truly believe on that too, and I practice that too. Salat, uh, Manajat, uh, Halwa, which is like isolation with God. It is very important to have these moments with God, mm. to talk to Allah, to mm. talk to Divine, mm. to, to have a connection with transcendence. Mm. It is extremely important. Because in one way or the other, your questions are then answered by God. In dream, sometimes, in reality, you know, in, in this physical life, because this dunya is the lower life. Mm -hmm. Dunya, it means uh, this worldly life is the lower life. This is the vehicle that is yeah. taking us to the next. So there is a the veil. Afterlife. Yes. So there yeah. is a veil. Mm -hmm. Then there is a life, Hayat al Barzakh, and then there is the day of resurrection. Mm -hmm. So when you when you are in a deep state of meditation in Islamic meditation and even in uh, other you know meditation and other kind of meditations as well mm. you were significantly drop from serial time to the absolute time mm. from this world to the other world mm. and dreams are somehow the part of it you know, there are signs there are symbols so you can find the answers to your questions if you are isolating yourself and talking to Allah to your God mm -hmm. and having that connection, you know, halwa, is very important, I believe, mm -hmm. to have that connection, to have that spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. Manajat, mm -hmm. salat, you know, prayers. And talking, because I always say this to my clients as well, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the biggest therapist. So, you yeah. know, all of us, the, the emotions that they are feeling, mm -hmm. I am all, only here to help them out, to, figure, to, fig, to let them figure out what they really want in their lives. But in actual, if you look at the purpose of life, mm. you know, everybody sitting in this room will have, in one way or the other, mm. have some kind of pain in their life. Of course. So, so many the, stories exactly. you don't know about. Yeah. When you're sitting down with people, exactly. and you, you have no idea that yeah. there's, they're going what they're struggling so with. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So it is important, but at the same time, why is it important? To understand the purpose instead of just going to, towards drugs or the societal sedatives it's important to have that connection and how how can you make that connection by having an isolated time with God sit down and talk to divine talk to Allah talk to your God mm. talk to him mm. what you feel like why you feel like that you spoke about meditation uh, in a world that has become increasingly loud it seems that, you know, the silent people, the quiet people, the people who are really actually achieving something, they've gone into the background. And things that, you know, you look at someone and you think, I'm not really sure if that, should, that individual should be a role model for younger generations because of whatever reason. And the people you'd really want them to follow are quieter and they'll be hidden away somewhere, yeah? So when we think about meditation, we think about silence as, yeah. as a part of that. How important 
is it for a person to observe periods of silence, uh, especially when there's so much going on, so many people are talking over each other, and tell us about that. So silence, I believe, is more like an esoteric aspect of human emotional feelings. Uh -huh. It's very inward. -y. Okay. Silence has no importance these days, unfortunately. Yeah. And I feel bad for that, and I feel sad for that. You need to have that silent moment in your house where you can just sit separately in the isolation mm. and can contemplate, mm. have self-reflection, have that halwa, the time with God. Mm. It is important. Mm. It is important to keep you spiritually grounded. Otherwise, pain can be managed, but it will not be cured. The wound will get, keep on expanding mm. and you will have the expansion of your soul wound. It will be managed, but won't cure. it will start bleeding. Wow. And we don't want to let it happen. But mostly people in the modern world, they do not understand this concept. Mm. Mm. They do if they want to, but they have forgotten. This is a very traditional concept back in the days. Yeah. But with the passage of time, everything is just um, becoming extremely exoteric like on the surface, yeah. how it uh, looks like. Yeah. We have forgotten, you know, mostly people, they are very much focused on their unnecessary body needs, you know, how do they look like, how, how they dress like, mm. or what do they have to do in their life, mm. what do they have to study and all that. This is also important. I'm not saying that this is not important. But a balance but is needed. Yes. So, you know, if you don't have a balance, the soul can go towards extreme. Mm. Right? Yeah. So there needs to be a moderate point, and your moderate point is your kalp, mm -hmm. your spiritual heart. Mm -hmm. That's where all the emotions are coming from. Yeah. Where, where these all emotions are coming from? Mm -hmm. You know, emotions are abstract, mm -hmm. but you feel them. Yeah. So you the, there is a them science. And you, and you know they're there, yeah. but many times you just don't know how to manage them. Yeah. You know, that, that's one of the, one of the things. And you know, with uh, Ramzan coming around the corner as well, just next month, uh, well, the end of this month, you think that that is also a time for us all to slow down, yeah. because it does happen, yeah. that you go through the month of Ramzan and, and you realize that, oh my God, something was missing from my life. Yeah. And that is where your soul is speaking yeah. to you, because we all undergo such a transformation. Yeah. So tell us how to ha reap the full benefits of Ramza. So, uh, we need to focus on our deeds, mm. on our thought processes, mm. because at the end of the day, it's your thought processes that are affecting your deeds. Yeah, yeah. So it all starts your from here. Yeah, intentions, your heart, mm. your thought processes, just have that self-reflection, contemplation again mm. and again. I keep on match, change the focus. Mm. Have, have this attitude of gratitude instead of blaming. This is important. You know, in psychology, we talk about Stock, uh, Stockdale Paradox. So, uh, Stockdale Paradox, it's basically based on um, one of the US high-ranked military officer who was a prisoner of war in the Vietnam War. Mm. So, he tells the story that how, you know, people, they are in the false hope and they do not realize what's so important in their lives. Mm. So, he tells that when he was a prisoner of war, there were many, he was tortured more than 20 times, badly tortured, and um, his years of imprisonment were eight years. And even then, he was able to get out of, you know, that trauma. So there were people who were asking him questions, how he was able to manage all that. He said, mm -hmm. at the end, you must prevail. Mm -hmm. Regardless of the hardship, regardless of the circumstances, you must prevail. So it is so important to have that sabr, patience, mm. Again, even in Ramadan as well. A cornerstone yes. of our religion. In fact, for the patience. last couple of years, the crime rate in Ramadan has become increasingly high. You don't even, you know, think of it, and then it's like there is another theft case in another house, in mm. another phase. You know, there are many news that that, that keep on coming Road up. Road rage. Yes, and you feel like, oh, it's happening in Ramadan. Mm. I mean, that's really strange. 
Number one thing that I believe that people, they do not have this sabr. They, they have this negative connotation attached with sabr. Mm -hmm. And they have these false hopes. And when they, they are unable to get anything, they start blaming God, start blaming, as I mentioned earlier, they start blaming them, mm -hmm. themselves. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I must, I, I must say this, that Allah always puts tranquility in your heart, regardless of any circumstances. The, the outcome wouldn't be the way you expect it. You know, sometimes it's more like that you wanted something like that, but yeah. it didn't happen like that. Mm. So Allah will put tranquility in your heart. Mm. It's not like a spiritual bypassing or, uh, you know, false positivity. Tranquility in your kalb is extremely important. And Ramadan is the month mm. where there should be tranquility in your heart. And how it comes, the journey is simple, mm. yet it has obstacles mm. for a modern man because mostly modern people they are having this spiritual crisis spiritual or, crisis yes, yeah so how, we need how do you then. know when somebody's having a spiritual crisis for people who are watching and it's very easy. you know they, how would they know so <clears throat> it's easy first of all they have uh, negative connotations attached with their emotions as I t uh, uh, spoke about it earlier, like sabr, I, I, well, I will have to mention about sabr as well. Mm. That mm. how will we define this emotion of sabr? Yeah. So here I'm going to again give an example so it would be easier for the audience to understand. Mm. Say for instance, if there is a funeral happening mm. and there are two people, one is crying a lot and the other per person is quiet, silent. Mm. People will come and will start saying, the person who is crying a lot, oh, have some sabr, have some patience. Everything is going to be fine. Mm. Look at your other brother and sister or sister. She's not crying at all. She is such a patient person. Mm. Well, I believe this is such a wrong thing to say. Let grief happen. Sabr is entirely different. Sabr doesn't, doesn't mean that you just eliminate the mercy from your heart. Mm. Allah puts mercy in your heart when you're inflicted with pain. This happened with Prophet peace be upon him when his son Ibrahim Islam died in his arms. Mm. He cried so much and he, he even said that, oh Allah has put mercy in my heart. Mm. You know, you have to, this, these are humanly emotions. Hazrat Yaqub mm. he cried so much that he, he lost his eyesight mm. yeah. on, the, on the separation of his son. Absolutely. So there are many examples present in our history, but People, they do not understand what sabr is. There's such a negative connotation attached with it. You have to cry. Mm. You have to let it pass. Mm. Grief has stages. Sabr is having a faith on Allah's timing. You know, something will happen, mm. but at the right time. I think that's sort of an, another thing of sabr is also the acceptance. This is very important. You first have to accept the reality, mm. acknowledge the pain, mm. and believe that everything is going to be fine mm. at the right time. And right time is not your defined time. Mm. Same as I, as I was talk, talking about the Stockdale paradox, as he discussed that his um, fellows, they were discussing, oh, we're going to be out from our prison uh, by the Christmas, by the Easter. But it never happened. They died. Mm. And he used to tell that I always said that I will be out, but at the right time. Mm. So, so this is what this Stockdale paradox in psychology is and we really give importance to that because people need to understand what actually, you know, what it means to prevail. You must, at the end of the day, you must prevail regardless of whatever the circumstances are. To not give up hope. Hope, uh, yes, mm -hmm. but hope shouldn't be like um, according to your own timings. You don't, you, you just can't say that, you know, I want this thing. I'm hopeful that this, w this thing will happen at this time. You know, when you have this uh, conditional conditions sort of that, you know, this patience. thing needs to happen in this <laughs> time, this is, if this is not a hope, I will say that this leads you towards more negativity. Instead of, if it doesn't happen in your defined time, you just feel more sad, more disappointed, more dis you're more disheartened then. So hope is more like having a belief um, on Allah that, Things will be better, but at the right time. And you wait for the right time. And submitting to his will. Yeah. 
submitting yeah. to his will that that's the biggest I think yeah. form of the patience yeah. that a person can have sadness and depression because we hear about depression getting you know it's getting more and more uh, common in the world not just our part of the world here because of other factors it's probably not diagnosed as much are they the same thing uh, no uh -huh. so there is a distinction between sadness and depression mm -hmm. every one of us feels sad but every one of us is not depressed okay. so depression is more like you have a suicidal thought when you suffer in sadness that okay. leads to depression yeah. when the pain is managed but not cured you live in that sadness mm -hmm. and then you have the suicidal thoughts you don't want to live you hate this life you feel like that this world is is not worthy of you you know uh, that you don't are, have a voice that they're not people who yes care and you. there are a lot of you know there are many suicidal thoughts okay you feel disappointed on every little thing mm -hmm. but sadness is an emotion that is an inwardly emotion and it it can be cured it comes from the divine wound it's telling us that something is wrong within our souls Let, let's get back to divine let's let's talk to him let's make it fixed so this is the way how you inwardly see the sadness and how you outwardly see the sadness you, if you suffer with pain, mm. then you lead, uh, you can lead towards depression. You know, it, everything that you're talking about is so, it, it's so simple, so simple to understand. If you have the right mindset and you're recognizing that these things are important, otherwise, just, you know, like you were saying as well, we tend, because the pace of life is so fast, we tend to be sort of like skimming on the surface to keep up with everything. And you think that, okay, if I sort of like stop for a while, I'm going to start sinking and that everything is just going to pass me by because everything is so fast. There's instant food, there's instant coffee, instant whatever, you know, everything, everything is happening so fast. So the time that we had, you know, maybe before for playing outdoors when we were children, going visiting parks, things like that. They seem to be, everything seems to have just taken over. So the, the human being needs that sort of soul replenishing activity as well that we're missing out on. What, what would you say to people who are watching that along with, of course, there's some things that you can't change. You just have to incorporate a balance, as you said. How should we structure our lifestyles, especially families, especially young children, and ourselves? First, first and foremost, you need to have a healthy environment. You need to create that healthy environment. There are people, you know, coming to me and um, they say to me that it's hard for them to create healthy environment mm -hmm. and I always say that uh, this to them that because you as you're developing an unhappiness mm. you know this is our intentional effort mm. this is an intentional thing to create happiness around you so people will be sarcastic sometimes they will hurt you the pain will come to you but at the end of the day, how you deal with it matters. Yeah. So, you know, if we are uh, trying to give importance to every little, those opinionated mindsets, mm -hmm. those cultural, you know, we are so much embedded in, under the cultural conditionings. We are so much embedded in the imp Generations yes. of baggage. Yeah, which is why we don't feel Especially healthy. for women. Yeah. And which is why we don't feel healthy, psychologically healthy, emotionally healthy, mm -hmm. even sometimes physically. Um, you know, your emotions also sometimes affect you Manifest physically. Manifest on your yeah. So it is important to let go of these things, like uh, sarcastic opinions, bad judgments about you. Because at the end of the day, it's, if you are good, you don't need to be bothered with the opinions 
that people are giving to you. Mostly people, you know, coming to me, they have this mindset, you know, people, they say this to me and I, I don't feel like I'm accomplished enough. I don't feel like I'm attractive enough. These kind of, uh, you know, statements, mostly girls, they have to say to me when they're coming for counseling or the therapy sessions. So in spiritual psychology, we truly believe that it is important to create the happiness around you, to create your own environment and how it is a and how is that possible? Definitely by developing yourself in positivity. Change your focus. Instead mm -hmm. of blaming it, have the gratitude, have more like, you know, you need to have the gratitude in your heart. Start focusing, uh, finding happiness, finding goodness in psychology we talk about, that you need to focus on the goodness. Mm -hmm. In fact, there, there is a collateral beauty of pain as well. Pain is surrounded by the collateral beauty. Even mm -hmm. if we have that eye, the inward eye to see that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it, it's actually the wounds that heal mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. the, something that you said there is so important, that if you're constantly surrounded by people who are saying these things or you feel this energy, you need to get out of that yes. toxic company yeah. to realize that. I think many people keep friendships because they have a fear of being without friends, yeah. they have a fear of being alone, they have a fear of being secluded, so then they think, okay, you know, I better stay in this group. Because it's all cultural conditioning, uh, Shabnam, it's, mm. it's, uh, it's extremely heartbreaking. Mm. But I feel like, you know, modern man has lost its actual journey. He has lost his actual journey. And everywhere you go, you see, you know, people are worried about other people. How will they think about it? What's their opinion about us? Mm -hmm. What they're going to talk about it? They have this, you know, uh, um, this thing with them attached to them. How to be perfect. Oh, right? that's a recipe for unhappiness, isn't it? Yeah, because they themselves are developing themselves in un unhappiness. Then. Yeah. You cannot be perfect. No You're a human can. being. Yeah. yeah. So it's more like we need to realize and acknowledge the fact of this life, the reality of the, accept the reality, that no one is going to be, going, going to be perfect ever. Mm. We're always gonna be imperfect, only, you know, divine, only uh, Allah, only God, He's is perfect. perfect. And there is actually beauty in imperfection. Yeah, there's a beauty in rawness, yeah. that's true. Which is why I was I uh, mentioned earlier about the kintsugi art mm. in Japan that how yeah. beautifully they you know repair the um, broken pieces. Oh, it is gorgeous. And it's beautiful. And you know the the price the, it gets significantly you know increased. The yeah. price of that item gets significantly increased. So because symbolic. Of that. Yeah. In, in it's, <laughs> that's how the human heart is. If it's broken and if oh. you're repairing it, yeah, with what you need to actually do. You become a beautiful person. Oh, that is amazing. Your soul becomes beautiful. How and beautiful. then when you die, you don't have any fear attached to it. Yeah. Because we all know that this is, you know, just a temporary life. This is just a phase that we are living. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. our soul is going to live. Mm -hmm. Our soul is eternal. You know, Hayat al and the day of resurrection. Mm -hmm. So we need to focus on the thought, thought processes and deeds are so important in this life that we just have this limited time. It's not going to be again. Yeah. The, just Value this it. Limited time. Value yes. it. Be positive. And people that they grateful. don't give exactly they don't give importance to their thought process. They don't give importance to their deeds. They are so much involved in the societal sedatives that they don't want to do anything, you know, regarding that. And even psychology, mental health is I believe it's so important because at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's your thoughts, it's your deeds that goes with you. And, you know, saying about, talking about mindfulness and uh, being motivated by the right thoughts that are forming your actions, okay. you know, I would say as well, that's also part of your life story as well. You and uh, Dr. Lake, your husband, you made this huge decision yeah. to come back to Pakistan when we are facing sort of a brain drain. Yeah. So you contributed to the sort of reverse brain drain by coming back because you had priorities. Yeah. And your priorities were that you wanted your children to be in touch with 
their roots, with their culture. I mean, so many things that other people would not place yeah. as reasons for yeah. coming back to yeah. Pakistan. For us, uh, Shabnam, I believe it's extremely important to be emotionally and spiritually well grounded. This mm. spiritual journey is very important. I always keep saying this to my husband, that we have a limited time in this world. Mm make best out of it. Mm -hmm. The actual purpose of this life is a journey to God. Yeah. We came here. This is a journey that we are living. This is our living. transition. Yeah. And this transition is where we think we are putting down roots. Yeah. Oh, is that a beautiful and, thought? And I believe that we, our children, you know, need to understand all that. I don't want them to be um, engaged or entangled in all um, fancy, glittery aspect of this temporary world. Mm. At the end of the day, it's the emotional ground, you know, how, how emotionally grounded you are, how mm. spiritually grounded you are, it matters at the end of the day. Mm. In this world, in Hayat al barzakh mm. and in the day of re re resurrection as well. Mm. You mentioned, a, a, you know, that beautiful Japanese art, you mentioned brokenness. What is the way for a person, the way forward for a person who feels broken? So first and foremost, accept the reality. Because mostly people who are broken, they do not accept the reality. They're in denial. Mm -hmm. Accepting the reality, mm -hmm. acknowledging the pain, changing your focus, um, instead of blaming have more like you need to have more gratitude i say this to my clients you need to have more gratitude you know, everything is happening for the reason mm -hmm. allah has his reasons mm -hmm. don't question the decree that's his decree make the connection with divine mm -hmm. it is extremely important and it's extremely important. Mm. I know it is hard, mm. but it is important. The path to God is always hard. You know, you will have a lot of obstacles, pain, mm. sadness, mm -hmm. grief. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inflict us with pain and all, grief and sadness and all that? Mm. Loss of wealth, health. Because He wants us to ask from Him, to make that connection with Him. Mm. So, in my opinion, other than those all modern psychological techniques like thought shift, thought uh, reframing, mm. or uh, writing down your, about your pain and suffering, it helps. Mm. It helps in managing out your pain. Mm. Okay. But for the cure, mm. you need to have that connection with divinity, with transcendence. Talk to God. Mm. Have halwa. It is important to connection. Very, very important. In isolation, yeah. talk to him because mm. he's your biggest therapist mm. at the end of the day. Mm. I always say this to people. Yeah. Tell us about a success story, somebody who came to you who was who was very upset or disturbed or you know, or whatever, and they couldn't find the they couldn't find the path that they wanted to travel on or whatever. Tell us about someone, an individual who you were able to help, to guide, and how it made you feel? Alhamdulillah. <clears throat> my clients and many people, my friends circle, uh, they have this, you know, I, I don't feel I'm worthy enough for all this, but they are grateful mm -hmm. that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed me in their lives. Mm -hmm. And I don't do anything for money. I, mm -hmm. I always give them suggestions are uh, be there in their hard times just from my own soul satisfaction because at the end of the day I'm accountable to God and it makes you feel good yeah wow. it makes me feel good so one of my very good friends she went through the painful and unwanted divorce and I told her everything is going to be fine just have time with divine. Mm -hmm. She was doing everything like psychological reframing, thought shift, writing down the diary, mm -hmm. and many of the things that mostly you know psychology talks about. But 
talking of your worries, mm -hmm. of your pain, mm -hmm. and sometimes your suffering to divine because you know there is going there is always going to be an answer from there. Mm -hmm. Oh, beautiful. So your belief system it's important your spiritual immunity it is increased then and now when she talks to me she calls me all the way from the u.s and when she talks to me and she says you were there with me in my hard times how whenever i pray i just pray for you how beautiful you were the first thought in my tahajjud now so this Sat makes Kadani. me feel good uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. so it's important to make people feel good instead of having that materialistic approach i know financial there are some financial needs for many people you have to be very you know particular about certain stuff but when it comes to the emotional needs um, when someone is coming to you outside of your practice and asking you for help i believe that you need to help it's everything is not about money you That's are already wonderful. you know working you're doing your job but when you are at home and someone calls you, hey, I feel upset. Mm. Take you out need the to, time. Yeah, you need yeah, to, have to because listen to them. You, at the end of the day, you yeah. You never know how much that's going to mean yeah. to someone. Um, Dr. Marupi, it has been lovely. It has been wonderful talking to you. Unfortunately, we're out of time for today's program. But thank you so much. And I am sure so many people are going to benefit from this because... It has changed the way I think. It has affected me, and I'm sure I'm going to watch this program over and over again oh, to gain from it. Th those are the things that you said. So before we sign off, just a short message to our viewers. Uh, never suffer in your pain. Try to cure your pain. Because if you only try to manage it, your soul wound, your divine wound will always going to be expanded and it's going to bleed someday so try to make time to have more spiritual connection with transcendence and i wish you all the luck and all my prayers all oh, that is beautiful thank you once again oh my pleasure and so that's all we have time for in today's episode but we will be back next week and until then stay happy stay healthy bye bye Thank you.